every all of the discussion started to happen late last year. It was it was around uh, Eliud Kipchoge and how he you know the ex the exhibition the the sub two hour exhibition and you know Bridget Koskai and we we saw um, Kenanisa Bikaili and we we saw a lot of unbelievable performance and what I noticed in you know, on social media or it was just that uh, over the last few decades the American marathon elite marathoners haven't um, competed as well right and I think you you have the record for the American with the most sub 210 marathons. And very infrequently do we now see um, an American below 210. So there is some art undercurrent of that involved in this where I think a lot of people, you know, on Twitter and social media, a lot of people with blue check marks were really feeling, um, you, know, uh, you know, just uh, like, like there was a sort of unfair advantage on top of the you know, the excess performance that was already happening. So, what do you make of that, and, and why don't we see a, more Americans below two ten? Well, Tony, uh, you know, is ever since I was an Nike athlete, I had a bottom shoe, uh, bottom of my foot issue, especially mm -hmm. in two thousand seven. Yep. So, I talk about it in the book, and it's it's just a wound. It's a third degree burn. Uh, that it is hindrance when you're running because if that starts hurting a mile 11, mile 12, you got 15, 14 miles of excruciating pain every right. step you take, except, you know, on the right one, you don't feel about every that's left step that you take is, is um, churns and it gets, and I'm out of commission. I mean, even after the London Olympic Games, I was in a wheelchair. Um, after the uh, 15K at the Gay River Run in 2007 when I was wearing a Nike athlete, I can even I have to use uh, broom to help me support to go to the hospital so they can mm -hmm. drain it. Yeah, having material like that helps. I mean, with the new one now, I mean, I mean, you can fly. I guess. I mean, for me, I think if you can protect your feet, that's the first thing that gives up on me. That or my quad. It's not my breathing. It's not my hard work that I have put in. It's just like my foot. Uh, you know, especially when there's a cobblestones and things like that. My 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 foot is beat up, and mm -hmm. that's. Part of the reason why I end up going to rush into retirement because every time I do that is the, I mean, imagine after the Boston win or after you know I think 2005 or so I have to drain my uh, foot like 15, 16 times. Yeah. I mean, every, you know, you go into VIP dinners or appearances and you wear regular shoes, but you have Dr. Schultz donut on, on it, so you don't you're not stepping on it. Maybe I even put two of them, you know, just to keep the clearance. So those things are important, but you know, I always whether I was wearing spikes with the, with Nike and others, so I always my that was my Achilles blisters, 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 and mm -hmm. and that turned out to be eventually third degree burn when I ran marathons. But is if you have a comfort in your shoes, you know, you have to do the work. It's not going to fly you in, you know, right. <laughs> safe in. But if is as talented as I am, or as talented as Kenanisa Bakare or Kipchoge or others that have done accomplish amazing thing, you know, I think with nutrition, equipment, uh, proper training, you know, you're not guessing the GPA, having a GPA swatch is important because you say you're not going to go, oh, I ran, I think I ran seven miles. No, you ran 6.9, so you need to go a little bit more or, you know, stuff like that. So it's very accurate. And then I think they have come to precise and nice shoes to help you with the, the aerodynamic or whatever yeah. or bouncing back and all that stuff but i've been definitely definitely fortunate to be able to work with sketchers been innovative from yeah. casual wear to a uh, high performance shoes so it's been great to be working with them and for me they helped me with the midfoot uh, mid, mid foot strike yeah. helped me be another long elongated my career whereas it would have been over in 2008 or 2010 yeah and then and what do you think the the americans have to do to to compete Thanks for reminding me that question. I think Tony is, you know, group training is important. After the training is important. I mean, thank God for Coach Joe Vigil and my coach Bob Larson. And they started, they were the first one in 2001 or, or so to be able to start the running USA in Mammoth Lakes, California. Why? Because the Kenyans, the Ethiopians, they were the, the landmark that we wanted to chase. And they were, guess what they were doing? They trained at altitude. So 
you know, uh, and we start doing that and then start training and formation of groups because when you are in group, you know, you have somebody to talk to even on the warm ups. You don't have to do maybe the same exact workout, but you can cool down together, you can warm up together, you can train easy runs together. It keeps you versus most of the time I was by myself secluded mm-hmm. and it's like, why, you know, if it was somebody else, say, hey, good morning, let's go for a run and this. It, it's a positive energy. So right. having uh, accountability with other tra- training partners, maybe, you know, sometimes my, when I was doing my tempos, Somebody would go over the first two, three miles with me and rest up and then go the last five, uh, seven or eight with me. And so stuff like that, you have, or toward the end of my career, I started ha- having somebody volunteer or hire a bike pacer, bi- bike pacer to help me because it does make such a big difference to having people to train with and also altitude is important. And so for the Americans to want to try to break uh, the next two ten, it looks, sounds, oh, two ten is easy when everybody's running two hours or two hours yeah. and five a minute. But... You got to do that day, and for that you have to do the dedication, the commitment, and the sacrifices for the for the short term benefit that you're going to put in and reward. It might not happen this year, but it might happen two, three years from down the road. It doesn't have you know marathon is patience and yeah. training. You know Ethiopians and Kenyans now, unfortunately, they mainly the Kenyans are getting more drug tested and getting positive tests. But before was the theory was just like when I was in Eritrea as a kid. We used to walk to school. It doesn't matter how far the school is from one village to the next village. So it's not training, but if you're running late, you run to it and you walk them back. So you are, and then when you're doing going to the to find woods for fire, or when you go into the well, you're going on your feet. So you are naturally training, just like the Kenyans and the Ethiopians. Mm-hmm. So in the United States, we look for the closest parking. And, hey, mom and dad, park on the closest one there because it's too hot outside or it's too cold outside. And so, you know, those situations, we don't have, Americans don't have enough miles under their belt. Right. To, so I think the praise goes to Coach Joe Vigo and Coach Bob Larson for having the vision and wanting to change the resurgence of U.S. distance running. They had the vision. Dina Kasser, who was a bronze medal at the 2004 Olympic Games, and myself uh, in the same year, a silver medalist, kind of gave them hope, uh, showed the resurgence of U.S. distance running. And many people, that was the breaking point. It says, hey, if they went to the high school here, collegiate here, and so won medals, we can do that. And uh, yeah. like this Lane Flanagan or... Kara Garcher or Desi Linden or Dathan Rittenheim or Ryan Hall and others start believing saying, hey, we can do it clean and uh, nice and pure because we have done those things. Our countrymen or women have done those and we can do definitely do that. I think that was a breaking ground.